What's up, my US history people? I'm gonna go over this quiz. Um, I'm gonna make the video that way we don't have to do it in class and waste your time. Um, waste your time. It's never a waste. So um, not horrible results, but there's a few things that we can improve on. And I'd like to go over that right now um, in terms of how we can. Uh, the biggest one that a lot of people missed more of were just the colonies. Um, and, and, and because it's important to know the difference between them, um, a lot of people could have written about the geographic differences. And honestly, this, is, this makes sense now uh, because the, the tone between the different colonies is gonna come up and it's gonna play a big role in the development of the United States. So just going through these here, uh, Georgia, definitely a Southern colony. Um, New Hampshire, definitely a, uh, either a middle or a New England one. In terms of tone, probably gonna go more with the New England. Maryland, it's right there in the middle <laughs> in the split there. Um, but it's definitely a Southern colony, as you'll see um, later on in the uh, Philadelphia Convention and uh, um, their role with slavery. Pennsylvania, definitely a middle colony. Connecticut, definitely a New England colony. It's way up there by Massachusetts. New Jersey, definitely a middle one. Uh, Rhode Island is gonna be a New England colony. And those New England colonies are definitely gonna be a little bit more uh, anti-British. Uh, let's see, Rhode Island was so gnarly against any form of government that even with the Philadelphia Convention, creating our own uh, constitution as we know it today, they didn't even go. They're like, we don't want strong government at all. Uh, North Carolina, known for its tobacco, so it's a southern colony. Delaware, middle, Massachusetts, definitely New England. That's like the epitome of the New England colonies. Virginia, um, known for its slaves, known for producing uh, a lot of presidents as well, but also a southern colony. New York, definitely a middle colony. Uh, and South Carolina, definitely southern. Oh, show. Moving forward. Next question here. What group of people wrote the Mayflower Compact? These were definitely the pilgrims. Uh, the Spanish conquistadors. Uh, yeah. Known for conquering. Quakers and Shakers. Those people are going to be known more in the middle colonies. Next. What reasons do the pilgrims give for why they have taken this voyage in the Mayflower Compact? About the only one that doesn't fit here is to find gold for the English crown. They definitely wanted to spread the Christian faith. They wanted to glorify God. So in terms of like why they were doing what they're doing, a lot of uh, movements in this time are driven by the idea that, you know, they're, whatever the people that are doing whatever they're doing, they're driven by their religion. And then finally, to honor their king and country, um, known for King James, not LeBron James. <laughs> um, moving on, uh, we're getting into this here. About the only correct answer here is this one. It's raw materials uh, for the colonies. They knew they, they didn't have gold in, the, in North America. There would be gold found, but it's going to be way out west. Uh, the slaves are going to be coming from Africa, and the English did try to enslave the Native Americans, but with not a lot of success. So that's the only right answer there. Uh, this one, we got to use the article for this. So in my, in my quizzes, what I like to do is give you an article and you know, let you pick through the information there just to kind of see how well you're reading. Um, question here is, although the separatists wanted to practice their religion freely, 
what shows that they did not believe in religious freedom for all. The way that we found that is their commentary on the Dutch. And you see it right away. Um, the, the folks who would eventually make their way over to North America had a stop in the Netherlands. And they didn't really like that the Dutch were tolerant to a lot of different faiths. So, uh, which answer, answer is that here? We gotta find it, found it easy. No, uh, they were unhappy that the Dutch tolerated the other religions there. There we go. Question six is also gonna be coming from the article itself. Um, although the trip across the ocean was hard and long, what indicates the separatists stayed healthy on the voyage? Well, there is a part of the article that talks about their trip over. Hey, only one person died and somebody was born. So that's a plus. Uh, didn't really mention that. Didn't really mention that. It's gotta be this one and this one. And the fun thing is, this is like a little bit of colonial or colonization fun. That trip over wasn't great. It took a long time. Like you can get from uh, like New York to London now on a six hour flight. That, took, that trip took two months. Imagine being on a, on a wooden boat for two months and you got to survive. Well, that trip over went pretty okay. Somebody was born and uh, only one person died. So <laughs> just, you do the math there. It's, you know, they kind of made out even there. One person died, one person born, not bad, not bad. Everybody else survived. Question seven and eight were the essay questions. What are the similarities and differences between the various English colonies? So again, what I'm looking for in terms of politics, um, the people that are coming over, one similarity between them is, although they are coming over to, or from England, so they're, they're coming over with that influence there from, from that particular government. They're going to be creating their own. Um, in terms of economics, this is what they got from the specific colonies. Uh, not a lot of economic purposes in the northern colonies from the start, but once they saw the amount of trees that were there, those trees were built for uh, ships. And that's one of the reasons why the English wanted to hang on to these colonies as long as possible, because they, it was able, they were able to build one of the strongest navies in the world. Um, culture, culturally, a lot of these religions or a lot of these people are going to come over and start to spread their religion. Um, you see that a lot in the New England or northern colonies. Uh, the different types of social groups, one thing that a lot of the colonists had in common was their mistreatment of of the Native Americans. Um, so if you're looking for similarities right now uh, in terms of politics, they're all influenced by the English. Socially, they didn't have a lot of uh, positive interactions with the natives. And then in terms of culture, uh, this is the spread of religion. Uh, certain colonies are gonna be a little bit more accepting of other religions. Uh, you'll see this with Thomas Jefferson's uh, doctrine on uh, religious tolerance in the southern colonies, uh, specifically Virginia, but in those northern colonies, it was a little bit, a uh, little bit more Puritan based. Um, what the colonies produced economically, again, in those northern colonies, we have the uh, use of ships or use of trees to build ships. The middle colonies are more about subsistence farming, so just producing enough food for uh, people to live on. And that's where you see those indentured servants uh, there in the middle colonies. Uh, those indentured servants would eventually, if they survived their contract, they could get their own land. But the big difference between uh, the New England and middle colonies was the ability for the southern colonies to grow cash crops like cotton or tobacco. and according to the quiz code, indigo. Um, so if you need at least three examples, uh, three differences right off the top of my head, 
uh, different purposes for each type of colony. Uh, similarities, all English, and all of them mistreated to some degree, the natives. So moving forward, the next question is going to be about the other countries that were there. Um, I needed to hear at least a little bit about the French. Uh, the French were in the middle of the country, and that would eventually create a conflict with England. Um, below the English colonies, we had the Spanish in Florida and uh, Central and South America. Um, how are they different? Well, in terms of purpose, the Spanish were looking to find gold. The French, like the English, were looking to find uh, economic wealth from the middle of the North American continent. A um, couple of people mentioned the Dutch and you pulled that from the article in there, that's fine. And the Dutch did establish uh, this colony called New Amsterdam, but they would eventually sell that to the English and the English would name it after an English town called York. And we got New York there. So that's what I would get from this quiz um, in terms of, um, what we needed um, to learn about. Um, got to know the different types of colonies there. We've got to know um, the purpose of the Mayflower Compact um, there who wrote the Mayflower Compact, the purpose of the English, they wanted raw materials, and then a little bit of, uh, a little bit of information from that particular article. So that'll wrap this video up. Uh, hopefully you use this. Uh, you'll see the right answers on the quiz if you want to retake it um, later on in the week. Uh, answers are going in the book as soon as I get one more response in. Um, so have a great Sunday. Uh, digging into the origins of the United States development. We're going to start off the week by uh, watching a little documentary. and. Uh, French and Indian War, baby. That's a biggie. It's expensive. I wonder what those English are going to do to raise funds. Taxes. So have a good one.